Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 22nd of March and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. Um, as always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. And uh, we'll use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Wednesday, the theme for prayer is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord of life, come wind of heaven, come flame of love, come giver of all gifts, come and fill us. And the psalm on a Wednesday is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I'm marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And today we carry on reading from Jeremiah and we pick up where we left off yesterday in Jeremiah chapter 18, beginning at verse 13. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Inquire among the nations. Who has ever heard anything like this? A most horrible thing has been done by virgin Israel. Does the snow of Lebanon ever vanish from its rocky slopes? Do its cool waters from distant sources ever stop flowing? Yet my people have forgotten me. They burn incense to worthless idols which made them stumble in their ways in the ancient paths. They made them walk by, in byways on roads not built up. Their land will be an object of horror and of lasting scorn. All who pass by will be appalled and will shake their heads. Like a wind from the east I will scatter them before their enemies. I will show them my back and not my face in the day of their disaster. They said, come, let's make plans against Jeremiah, for the teaching of the law by the priest will not cease, nor will counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. So come, let's attack him with our tongues and pay no attention to anything he says. Listen to me, Lord, hear what my accusers are saying. Should good be repaid with evil? Yet they have dug a pit for me. Remember that I stood before you and spoke on their behalf to turn your wrath away from them. So give their children over to famine, hand them over to the power of the sword. Let their wives be made childless and widows, let their men be put to death, their young men slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when you suddenly bring invaders against them, for they have dug a pit to capture me and have hidden snares for my feet. But you, Lord, know all their plots to kill me. Do not forgive their crimes or blot out their sins from your sight. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your anger. So the next part of Jeremiah. So let me read a reflection, and this week they're written by Bishop Graham James, and he says this. Although in our contemporary world, biblical knowledge is not what it was, someone forecasting disaster may still be described as a Jeremiah. Today's reading tells us why. Jeremiah's prophecies of doom for Israel continued for around 30 years, and so his credibility waned. If Jeremiah was really speaking words from the Lord, why did nothing happen? The priests and leading figures among the people of Israel got fed up having their integrity impugned, so they plotted to destroy Jeremiah's reputation. Why should he not get a taste of his own medicine? Jeremiah, aware of the plotting against him, pleads with the Lord to act. God may have his reasons for being patient with his faithless people, but within Jeremiah himself there's a longing that the Lord should not forgive their iniquity. There are two features of the human condition vividly reflected here. The first is the way in which we long to strike back at those who are our severest critics. Sometimes we know in our hearts that what they say has a measure of truth. That may make us even more angry and resentful. Was that the case with Jeremiah's opponents? 
When we're in the right, however, and face opposition, we may want to see our critics face retribution. That's dangerous too, since we become judgmental, usurping God's place. Righteousness can morph into self-righteousness. Being resentful or becoming self-righteous, neither is attractive. Which is the greater danger in our own lives? Very real, very human conditions, aren't there? How we handle criticism or how we handle being truth, truthful and not being full of pride and uh, judgmentalism. And so we pray and we begin with the collect for this week. Merciful Lord, you know our struggle to serve you. When sin spoils our lives and overshadows our hearts, come to our aid and turn us back to you again through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for Lent. God of our deepest selves, as we walk with Jesus in the wilderness, as we face our fears and doubts, as we leave behind all that has weighed us down, may we tread with lightened step through the 40 days of Lent, knowing that we are dust and to dust we shall return, but will come to Easter filled with joy, knowing that we are loved and meant for life with you forever. Amen. On all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who've lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless, Holy Spirit, making strong the weak, Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture, Holy Spirit, filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God, guide us. The power of God, preserve us. The wisdom of God, instruct us. The Spirit of God, be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer. I hope you have a great day. And if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.